All right, for all of you who think that this is a steam boiler, put some comments in the comment section down below. If you think that this is a steam boiler, I'll let you have five seconds to think about that for a hot minute. We have a pressure troll, pigtail, 30 PSI pressure gauge, steam low water cutoff. This is the, which one is this? Oh, McDonald Miller. Okay, sight glass, upper and lower valves. We have a high limit aquastat, switching relay, thermostat relay, transformer, electronic condition module, automatic vent damper, and back there, Roll out spill switch, sorry, spill switch, and your roll out switch is right down there. Morning. Daniel. Yes. What does this look like to you? Besides a hot mess? Steam boiler. Steam boiler, right? You're wrong. Alright, so technically it is a steam boiler, but it's not being used as a steam boiler or won't be used moving forward as a steam boiler. This Burnham SIN5, 140,000 BTU gas-fired boiler from August 2013. Someone decided, <laughs> someone decided that they're going to uh, make this a hydronic boiler with all those zones over there. One, two, three, four, five, which includes that indirect Turbo Max and not this A.O. Smith low boy. 40? Low boy 50. Okay. Daniel. By the way, this is Daniel, DCHVAC. Check out his YouTube channel. We have a mission. We're gonna, I'm going to remove this. We're going to take out that low water cutoff. We're going to remove the sight glass. We're going to cap one of the upper or lower uh, nipples coming out. We're going to put a probe in its place in one of them. Probably the one on the bottom. A pressure oil is going to come out. That's going to get capped. And... Hopefully, by the time we're done, which will probably be in about an hour from now, this will be our hydronic boiler. What do you think, Daniel? Sounds good. Sounds good? Okay. Philip screwed up. Everything you put on is extra so tight. It's trying to crack the glass, but... <laughs> Man, this guy's a bodybuilder. All right. So, this switch is controlled by that box, right? And is the switch on top of the stairs on or off right now? It's off. It's off? So there's no power? It's going to the switch, correct? Yeah. So oh. off okay. Off. I guess we'll find out. No power? No power. Sure? Yep. Would you bet your paycheck on it? Yeah. Okay. Then I'm confident then. All right, what do we got going on in here? We have a lot of shit going on in here. We have, here is probably line coming in. And then it goes to maybe transformer and fans. Yeah, transformer. This one goes that way. Oh, is that how they did that? Where does this one go? All the way over there. Okay. And transformer. This is low voltage, low voltage. This is damper control interesting very very interesting daniel's removing the coupling and the upper side class valve imagine things started like pissing at you it would suck no he actually finally a homeowner who, who actually did what he said he yeah. did that's like non-existent <laughs> Yeah, try to take that one out. Oh, look at that. Hercules, Hercules. Daniel, you like my probe? Yeah, it's fine. Do you know that in the late 90s, mid to late 90s, Ford, the Ford Motor Company, manufactured a car called the Ford Probe? Do you know that? No. You also didn't know what the Concorde was this morning. Yeah, I mean, I don't care about planes. <laughs> They screwed it in with what, Philip? Uh, no, right, a quarter inch. Do 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 do. 
do 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 and by the way you know when i first met the homeowner daniel he wanted to get a a white boxy hang on the wall for space heating and domestic hot water let's just let's just say you're very smart you see that was a good save by the way it's a good save That we could, uh, that we'll keep. Why was that a good save? Because, you know, there's only one white box in this world that matters. And we're not talking about your girlfriend's white box. Why is it pink? <laughs> this is not the uncensored channel. You okay, Daniel? Yeah, I'm good. Why? Okay. Did you enjoy the cyber truck yesterday? Yeah. Yeah? It's like, probably, I think, the most enjoyable thing I've ever done in my life is drive that around. Really? Not, not fly, like, in, in the front of the plane, no. first class? No? Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you actually enjoyed driving a Cybertruck? So much that I really am considering buying one. Really? You want to buy that one? Yeah. I'd, yeah? Get, I'd get the, the cheaper one. you get a cheaper one? Oh, yeah. the, the one that, that's not going to exist for, like, another f three or four years? Why is it not going to exist? Because, come on, everything Elon Musk says takes forever. So, yeah, right. You know, there's a fifty thousand dollar. They will sue you for fifty thousand dollars if you resell know, the cyber. But the good thing, I bought someone's reservation on eBay, and the car is technically still in his name under the Tesla account. <laughs> yep, the reservation cost me four hundred dollars on eBay about three months ago, and uh, I took it over. Are so let let them sue him. Getting rid of this one. Yeah. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the Long Island metropolitan New York City area, if you want to rent a cyber truck. Go on Toro. You can rent the Mikey Pipe Cybertruck for four hundred fifty dollars a day. People on your YouTube video thought you were renting it, like you. Oh well, let them think that. It. Good. <laughs> but the thing I personally hate it. It sucks. No, I love it. You can, okay, so Dan, you know what? You could. Um, well, that would be a nice like bonus, wouldn't it be? <laughs> yeah, but good luck. That ain't happening. <laughs> we could take Peter's pickup truck and give it to you if you want. No. No. All right, let me get to work. You know, surprisingly, knock on wood, we've got, been quite successful. Right now we're taking out the 30 PSI pressure gauge. The lower cutoff is removed. The lower nipple is removed and the well is installed. Here's the tridicator gauge. I'm gonna put that on there. Beautiful, sweet. I'm not going to touch the probe for the old lower cutoff. I'll probably leave it there. But I would like to take out this elbow bushing and nipple coming out of the side of the boiler for where the pressure troll was. Pressure troll was connected to the pink and the gray wire. And I just removed that out of the equation and jumped out or connected the gray and the pink. One coming from looks like the automatic vent damper. And the other one coming from the thermostat relay right there and we have our lower to cut off we'll utilize some of those wires for our new rb24 hydronic boiler lower to cut off come on where are those you have your wheaties this morning daniel you have to get a wrench you see you ain't that strong yep you ain't that strong oh my god look your face turned like red yeah <laughs> No? Aww. You have any wrenches here? There's a wrench right there, you. What is this? This is a Pittsburgh. Look, it's a Pittsburgh wrench. Is it from like Harbor Freight? It's a Mike G wrench. Is it a Mike G? Is it come from Harbor Freight tool? <laughs> Let's see. I would, you know, take the elbow out if you want. Yeah. Take that right? Okay. Here we go. Hercules! Hercules! Oh, yeah. Get that money, Daniel. See? Got that money. Have you been hanging out with Lawrence next door in the uh, the body shop? No? See, Lawrence. See, Lawrence was a pig about the, the, the cyber truck. He wanted to take it for a little spin, like around the block, and he takes it to freaking Far Rockaway for a half an hour. Lawrence is the, uh, he owns a body shop, you know, literally a body shop where you work out. 
two stores over from our shop, and uh, he likes to come and say hi and hang out. Okay, next. Dum dum dum. Cat. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's three quarter. I have a three quarter inch cap. Here's a cap. Here's a half inch cap. We need that, and then the well's gonna go there. Oh, hold on. We gotta do a low water cutoff. Should I put, I I put the low water cutoff? Put the low cutoff right yeah, there, right? Yeah. yeah. Don't make fun of the guy's water heater. Cold water just piped out to nowhere. Oh, that's uh, that's besides the point, but don't make fun of his Turbo Max. <laughs> so the guy who sold you that Turbo Max, he said it was the best thing since sliced bread, basically. That's what he said. All right, we're installing the RB24 hydronic 24 volt low water cutoff onto the side of the boiler. I've seen many, many guys that brag about how they do things, and at the end of the day, when you put Teflon tape on those threads, you might as well not even bother putting in a low water cutoff. Why? Because on page six, under step three, installing the low water cutoff, it says clear as day with a big giant explanation point inside of a black triangle saying, warning, do not use PTFE tape, only use pipe sealant. Failure to follow these instructions will cause the probe not to function as intended and could cause property damage, personal injury, or death. You don't want to cause death, do you? So only put, see D right there? D on the threads? Sparingly, sparingly, wow. Apply pipe sealant to the external threads. D of probe A. See? D and A. Right, Daniel? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay, making sure, you know. Oops. Okay. So now that the RB24 is secured, we're going to run that wire. And we're going to run it somewhere over here. Dan, you know that when I was your age, you know how intimidated doing this I would be? I was really at first, too. Yeah. Very, very intimidated. Um, do I have something with there? Yeah. You can put this in there if you want. It's not the, uh, the one I would like to have there, but something's better than nothing. Right in there. One of those black little bushings with plastic bushings would be nice. Hold on. Do you have one in there? Oh, I have one in there. I got three. Oh, no, I don't have one. Let's see. Where in your bag? The top portion or the front portion? Like, not that top. That's this top? top. There's a bunch of random stuff in there. Yeah, there's a bunch of random stuff, but not random enough that I'm looking for. No. Where? Oh my God. Is there anything here that's going to poke me, stab me, cut me? No? It's possible. <laughs> Negative. Really? No. By the way, I wonder if this bucket... It's going to be the death of me. What do you think? Hopefully not. All right, so we removed the, another Phillips screw from the transformer chassis, and we had a couple wires going to blue, which is common, and the brown, which goes to our thermostat relay. That was the other part of the thermostat. So when, we, when we're going to reconnect that relay to here, it's going to go to brown, and blue and that's going to turn on our thermostat relay and then it'll power our automatic vent damper and all the other safeties make sure they're okay before it sends power to 24 volts to the electronic ignition gas valve module and then to the gas valve a sorry intermittent spark ignition module let's call it the right terminology Fifteen PSI relief valve. Here's our new one. Thirty PSI. All right, six inches off the floor. Thirty PSI relief valve mounted vertically. This is the Wilkins Zern. Pretty nice. Much cheaper than the Watts. One seventy four A. 
we pulled out the transformer and the thermostat relay wiring harness and all the wiring that was going to this, everything. The 24 volts going to our burner circuit, which is also the rollout switch down there and the spill switch back there, all go to the yellow and red wire, which is gonna go to our burner circuit on our new um, L8174. Did I get it right? L8148. Oh, Going to a new L8148 E1265. That is the Honeywell, now known as Residio, Aquastat relay. So we have a high limit Aquastat. We have a connection for a automatic vent damper. We have L1 and neutral for power coming in. We have C1 and Neutral for a circulator, if we're gonna use a primary loop circulator, for example, or there's only one zone in the boiler. And then you have 24 volt burner circuit. So pretty good integrated all-in-one module. You see these on a lot of slant fin boilers, old school Burnhams, Will McLean's, tried and true and tested mechanical device, electromechanical device that will deliver decades of service and performance as long as there's no electrical failures here. Deal right now is just securing the wire and the box is already mounted to the probe that was previously installed. All right, now we are wiring L1 and neutral from our junction box to the Aquastat relay terminal for L1 and power. L1 and neutral, sorry. Look at this little ratcheting screwdriver. Wait, look how fast I can tighten this. Okay, screw. I hear you. Okay. Good for you. Oh, you didn't make it tight, huh? You didn't make it good and tight? I did, but I've shifted it so many times. Oh, uh, there's a little switch. set screw in the bottom, guys. 516 screw. Okay, so 24 volt and burner circuit. There's the burner circuit, there's the wires. What do you need? Is there any VX cut from that that's long enough? Why? To cover this. Oh, I was, I was gonna let it. Just let it be? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then we'll like zip tie it together, it looks nice and pretty. What do you need? Wire cutters. How about needle nose? Yeah. There you go. That doesn't go onto one already? Isn't there like a post for, or is that the, something else? Oh yeah, there is. Yeah. There is. See? Yeah. There's a post on one of them. Burner circuit. One takes, yeah, one takes that and one is a post. Oh. Yeah, you gotta get to the hole. Rubber grommets. I don't know why they changed their name. You know, you know what happened yesterday? What was announced? Bosch bought Johnson you Controls. You got that stuff on your face now too. Do I really? Yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah. And your uh, is it on your eyebrow? I don't know. I need a vacation. Bosch Home Comfort Group bought Johnson Controls (JCI). So now York <laughs> is now owned by Bosch. Bosch. Yeah. I don't know why they did that, but I'm going to remain silent. Don't want to uh, ruffle any feathers with the good folks over at Bosch, who we love. Want to say hi to Nana Claire? She's not watching. You never know. Maybe one of her friends will watch. Like, oh, look. Nah. Look, Claire. Nana Claire, look. Your grandson, Daniel, is playing with the wires. I think all her friends are dead. Damn. She's that old? Uh, I mean... So what, she's friendless because they're all dead? Really? Yeah, probably. No, actually, I think there's a few people. <laughs> How old is Nana Claire? I don't know. But it was just her birthday. 
You know, Trump got shot on her birthday. Oh, that's right. Worst birthday present ever. By the way, that kid who shot him looked like he's like an inbred, like I know. country pick. You saw that kid, right? <laughs> it looked like he was like his two sisters were with with their cousin. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Let's keep it real. <laughs> Alright, you know what they said they found? They said they found encrypted offshore bank account access on his iPhone. In Yemen? Oh, we don't we don't know that they, they didn't disclose that, but they, apparently there's encrypted offshore bank account apps on his phone. How does that have as a twenty year old that's inbred living in Eastern, the, 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 the coal mountains of, of, of Pennsylvania, right? Where 20 year olds can hardly barely afford to fill up their gas tank. How does he have offshore bank accounts? Okay, Something's right. up. Yep. Something is yep. crazy, man. I don't like to spread conspiracy theories, but. But it can be because, I mean, like you said, high step up. Why would there, yeah, why would there be bank accounts, you know, bank apps on his phone for like, off, like bank accounts that don't exist in the U.S.? I mean. <laughs> come on, man! <laughs> like, come on, man! <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. Some someone was onto something, but you know, yeah, yeah but and yeah, yeah. And, and the father happened to own that that high powered rifle. That it, but that's a good way to hide everything, though, because now you got to think of who's gonna really look into the phone. Yeah. Well, they didn't think they, you know, probably they didn't, whoever whoever it was, if if he acted alone or if he acted with somebody else, they probably didn't think that. Oh, they never crack into the phone, but they did get into the phone. Yeah. You know, Apple, you know, basically said, you know, probably the government threatened Apple, like, you know, with strong arm. them, like, listen, you're going to give up, you're going to give up access or it's, it's over for you. So, so remember, TikTok? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to TikTok you, Apple. But they are trying now anyway, because they don't want them to be, you know, to be the only one anymore. Yeah. What am I doing with this? Are we pulling off of this? I would pull off that, yes. Unless you want to add a transformer. Want to add a transformer? Uh, it doesn't matter. Then you got to go two different directions. Yeah, where's the, uh... What? The manual for this. The manual for what? Uh, that? Uh, relay. Right here. You trying to figure out where R and 24 volts is? Yeah. Bingo. There's your wiring diagram. All right, we got the transformer mounted again. We we're going to take 24 volts for a low water cutoff from the Aquastat switching relay. And even though the transformer will support it, you know what? My experience with these guard dogs, they like to take out transformers, but the older model did that all the time. It's got the brass shank. So transformer here, and we have our low water cutoff wire. From the low water cutoff, going into behind the transformer, and then I have my red and white wire connected to the 24 volt secondary circuit of the transformer and the end switch going down here in the original insulation of that wire we're going to cut well daniel we have two wires it's like diffusing a bomb you know a ba bomb are you gonna get demonetized now why For saying they bomb changed a bunch of uh, like what stuff what they change like why would i be demonetized is... I don't know if you're saying the word. Bomb? Yeah. For the, for the video? Yeah. No. All right, I'm going to cut cut the red wire or the yellow wire. Whatever. What wire do you want me to cut, the red or the yellow? <laughs> the one inside down, I go boom. Boom. <laughs> Shit. Um, yellow. I figured I'll match the wires that are going to the end switch of the low water cutoff wago look at this so now we have a wago this is the wago lever connector model 221 for two conductor wire we'll go like that and we'll be done right not really see gotcha let's put this one there we're breaking the circuit just like when the christmas light goes out they all go out here's the other one right there and here's that. So now, technically, if we were to flip this switch, if we flip it the bird, it'll power. 
What do you think, Daniel? Yeah. Should we secure the switch plate to this thing, maybe? Let's shove all this in there. Get in there. Get in that box, you boxer. Ugh. Oh, with your ratcheting screwdriver. <laughs> by the way, people are gonna hate on you for that, by the way. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Oh, and it just says oil boy. We, you know what? We'll put, we'll put a red sticker on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, red sticker. All right. A little behind schedule, but we're okay. All right, Daniel. So if you're confident, you could do the honors and you could turn on the power. And I'm going to watch it go boom. Oh, where's the circuit? Oh, the circuit breaker's off? Yeah. Everything is off. I told you I'm going to turn the electricity off. Everything has to be off. <laughs> Man, this guy. <sighs> this boiler. This boiler. All right, here we go. Okay, we, a circulator came on. Yeah. So. Can you turn the breaker back off? Yes. Okay. Why is there a circulator on? Is there a call for heat? Let's try that again. You ready? Indirect. Let's uh, disconnect. No, disconnect what? Yeah. Okay. So let's check everything out right here. We have a red light on our low water cutoff. That's indicative of a low water condition. It'd be nice if we added water to this. Should we add water to your boiler? We can't. There's, uh... There's a hole. No, 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 you can. We can, yes, we can. Hold on, well, the plug is here. That was enough for the drain. You gonna put a drain up there? Okay, here. Where's there a drain? He had one. Oh. You gonna put a drain up there? Oh yeah, make it a little, uh... Tech problem? Teflon? Let's see. Right here. Asking you shall receive. Not too shabby. Nothing else is working. You know, it doesn't look like a steam boiler anymore, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, a little. A little? Well, yeah, two steam pipes coming out of the top. Two <laughs> two two inch black steel pipes coming out of the top of this boiler. Well, that's that's a get dead giveaway. But, you know, I like that this homeowner had installed the Axiom um, expansion tank manifold there with the uh, pressure gauge. I think it's overkill. I think so. You think but you I agree, know, right? Yeah. That, 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 you know, for what it's trying to uh, achieve, you know, if you add... Listen, technically speaking, technically speaking, if you look at any... And I know you have the hydraulic separator there, but if you had a, on a normal hydronic simple system, you have one pipe as a supply side leaving the boiler, so the outlet side of the boiler, and then a certain distance from that, you have an air separator, which is okay. like the top half of this, okay. right? Below that air separator, there's a tapping on the bottom of our half-inch female threads. There's half-inch female threads on the bottom of that air separator. From there... Every single manual says that's where your water feed will be going into, okay? To make life easier, so when we do like a, like a, a boiler, that like cast iron boiler that sits on the wall, or even a high efficiency one, that air separator will have our incoming water going into a, spe a special T made by Webstone, and the bottom of the T is where the expansion tank hangs from. Uh -oh. And it doesn't hang by thermostat wire, but <laughs> the, uh, there's, a, there's a valve to isolate the expansion tank and also drain the expansion tank should you need to replace it. It would have to drain the whole boiler. And there's also a valve that, to stop the incoming uh, uh, domestic, the, the, the domestic boiler water supply going into the boiler. Okay. So that's where we put a Kalefi, like your half-inch pressure reducing valve there with the backflow prevention device. That's where we normally put that. All right, Daniel, we can uh, fill her up. Well, I wouldn't do the zone zone. Whoa, 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 I wouldn't do the zone. Close that valve. Actually, no, keep, we'll close this. We'll close this. 
And that's open, that's closed. Man. Okay. I didn't notice this before, but maybe I have a question to ask you. Do you want to kill your family? Why? <laughs> this extra is for boiler system expansion tank. What is that expansion tank connected to? Uh -oh. You point to it if you want. Yeah. That? Yeah. Is that a boiler system? No. No. What is it? It's a water tank, but... To, to, to the order. the actual. He, he gave me that. Yeah. It's not. I, I didn't notice because, that until just now. The, because the um, the pressure relief valve was leaking. And I, and, I, and I went to the... Yes. Okay. So, correct. So, this tank here is pre-charged to 12 PSI. <laughs> All right, which is the same tank you have over there. over there, which is also 12 PSI. The water, your domestic water supply, is generally north of 45, 50 PSI. Sometimes we even have high pressure. We have to install a pressure-reducing valve where it's over 115, 120. And that's where you install a domestic thermal expansion tank. This is a hydronic thermal expansion tank. And this is used in low-pressure hydronic heating systems, right? And because if I were to hook it, if this is still doing something, which is not, if I were to put this on this kind of system, this would immediately fill with water, with pressure. Okay. Immediately. Right? Um, they make domestic thermal, domestic water, thermal expansion tanks. So for this size home, you, you can probably get like an ST12, that's the model number, or ST5 okay. um, at, you know, a plumbing supply house. I wouldn't go to Home Depot. You're going to pay like three times the price it normally is. But they're expensive, by the way. They're north of... Re, uh, wholesale costs are north of seventy bucks. Maybe the, so. the, the, the pressure relief oil was leaking. So on I, the on the water here. Yes. So, now, so, I so the now. question is, what? Where's your water main, by the way? Over there. Okay. Let's go to the water main. Let's see if we can find out why your relief valve on your it's currently dripping. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, on a, I'm going to give you some education because you have, you're renovating your house, obviously you're mechanically inclined. So, I know you're scared of electricity, but I can give you an education on plumbing and this, and this for example. So, the code states, you shall install a means for expansion of water in a closed system, a closed domestic water heating system. When your faucets are off, you technically have a closed system. Right. If you have a backflow prevention device or a valve that lets water travel only one direction on your water main or somewhere on that closed loop, right, you shall install a means to absorb that pressure, and that's an expansion tank. That's what the basically that's a condensed version of what the code states. Okay. So if you did not have a backflow prevention device here, which I don't see, but this may be something similar. These two water filter systems, they may allow water to only travel one direction. I don't know. I don't, I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't guess, but, but if there is, you technically have a closed system and you need means to absorb that pressure because when the water is being heated, pressure builds up. Not to the point where the relief valve should open, but sometimes it does. Okay. So that's why we have, in a lot of cases we have, let's say you have an irrigation system. And you have, you know, sprinkler system for your lawn. Okay. And you have a, a separate T off your water main going to that irrigation system. And you have a backflow prevention device on that line. In the winter, right, is when you'll have a problem, not the summer. Because in the summertime, the valve is, is, is open. Mm -hmm. And it won't be really an issue because you have this whole field to play with. Okay. That's all I'm told. It, in theory, it doesn't really make any sense. But in theory, it does. But you need the right expansion tank for that water here. And that was ST12. ST12. Yep. And there is a difference now. One other thing to keep in mind, we'll go back over there. One other thing to keep in mind, right? Here, you have, this is kind of, this is actually very, very interesting here. You have your domestic cold water pipe on this side and domestic hot here. Okay. And by the way, it shall be installed on the domestic cold water line. And notice how this is three quarter inch. And then it sizes down to half inch. Half inch tank. Guess what size an ST12 is or ST5 is, or similar tank size? There you go. <laughs> now, do you know that because you know who changed this and put this on there? Was it you? 
I added on when they started leaking. When they started leaking, yes. Okay. So what you're once you do this whole switch over now, right? You're going to add an ST five or twelve. Okay. Uh, I I personally, I probably would not get what rid of what, what do you have because I fear that without having a thermostatic mixing valve on that indirect water, I don't know if you do or don't. I do. Oh, you do. Yeah. Uh, you may run out of hot water. Okay. It's kind of a small tank, but I really don't know the specifics on what the gallons. Per hour of that tank can give you at like 120 degrees or 110 degrees. I really don't know, but it's kind of a small tank. Unless you have, unless you have like one bathroom here, then yeah, yeah. So maybe a little bit small, but you'll see. And it, but if it is small, and you are running out of hot water, you'll crank up the aquastat for the tank to close to 180 degrees, which matches the boiler temperature. Mm -hmm. And then the tank itself will be up close to 180 degrees, but that thermostatic mixing valve will temper that down. To 120, 110, whatever that sweet spot is, where if you have young kids, young kid, these are not going to get scalded. You want to make that's in one prior. So you should be able to turn on the hot water and keep your hand under there for a little bit of time. Okay. If it's scalding hot, you need okay. to lower that temperature okay. on that thermostatic mixing valve, okay. the tempering valve on the water heater, okay. not like on the not, not the thermostat, not the aquastat for the tank, because okay. you want it, that to be as hot as possible and dilute. The hot water with enough cold water to gotcha. have you a nice temp. Okay. It heats 30 gallons of water, 100, it'll heat it by 100 degrees in seven seconds. Jesus Christ. That's crazy. Yeah. I guess, I guess he was right. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. All right. So here we are. The boiler is energized. We have a red light on our low water cutoff, the RB24. And let's give it water. Ready, Daniel? Ready. Let's make sure that that valve's closed. And da -da 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 -da. Okay, close, close, closed. All right, that's the shark bite valve right there. <laughs> Don't fall. All right, what do we got going on there? Instant leakage. Yeah, but is, that a, is there a relief valve there? Yes. Okay, open it up again. Let's give it a sec, maybe it'll stop. There you go. You have a well pump? A pump? Yeah. Pressure, pressure sucks? Pressure is, no, no pressure at all. Well, you know why the pressure sucks? You notice that, that, that galvanizing, that black piping that's over there leaking. You know, that's, um, that's the plan. We're talking about $16,000. A new water main? Yeah. What well, size water main is coming in? Is it lead? So we're over here by the incoming water coming from the street. Let me show you this. So here is that one inch coming in. I took a a knife and I just scraped the pipe coming in and you can see it looks like lead but it's actually threaded into this elbow and we do have a one by three quarter inch galvanized elbow there and I don't know why you have no water volume because that galvanized piping coming from the street that's probably <laughs> I bet you a straw for a uh, like a soda a fountain soda from the Burger King is a larger diameter than what's coming into this house. Crazy. Wow. All right, our damper just opened. There's our ignition, our spark ignition. And this is set to on. Good. Just turn the gas on. There may be some air in there to purge out. And Multiple leaks here, but I just want to make sure this thing fires up and so this thing is Yeah, let's yeah. You got a rag or something I want to wrap it around the pipe so I don't want to drip through the boiler Yeah, we got leaks on this T This union that air separator. Thank you Okay, we do have ignition Turns off the boiler. Okay. She works. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to this video on the retrofit conversion of a Burnham Independence 
140,000 BTU gas fired steam boiler trimmed to a hydronic boiler with the required safety and operating controls. If you are in the Long Island, New York City metropolitan area, and you need some help for your plumbing or HVAC systems. We specialize in service or repair here at Pipe Doctor Home Services. We can be reached at 516-348-6300 or save time, book online at pipedoc.net. My name is Mike Dyke. It's been a pleasure to record this service call and this content for you. If you appreciate it, I would love if you hit that thumbs up button, thoughts and feedback in the comments section down below. And please, the biggest compliment you can give me is hit that subscribe button. There's no course or obligation. It's been a great, great morning with this video. Today is July 24th, 2024, Wednesday. And I will be out of the office until August 5th. And very little videos will be posted to the YouTube channel. I'll be on vacation, holiday, with my wife in the... Um, Italian Alps. Catch them when I get back. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.